What's up friends, Liron here. Welcome to the second part of the Bruges sketch in which we will shade the sketch we did. Um, I'm really enjoying this one, I hope you too as well. Without further ado, let's jump straight to business. Okay friends, so let's get to shading this thing. Um, now, what I want to do is sort of recognize the different uh, values, what's light, what's dark, and then just go in and even in time-lapse um, crosshatch them. Uh, that's my style, I love crosshatching and it's just really repetitive. So I'll sort of explain, sorry, the, um, the process I go through and then get to it. So what we have here, um, this building is super, super light. Uh, the roofs are dark and this entire thing is darker than uh, this building. So now we need to make a decision as to what's the lightest tone because you'll notice that this side of the building is a little um, darker than this small strip here. The question is if it's relevant in the overall composition. So what I think I'll do is actually leave this entire thing white and hope it'll work uh, well and just start darkening the roof and all of the things. So uh, let's start actually with uh, the roofs of this left side. Okay, uh, I'm gonna just start cross-hatching this and I'll start from the most extreme one uh, just to work from left to right and be well organized. So I'm just doing uh, this bunch of parallel lines. Um, it's very time-consuming, I think. It's not uh, like the necessarily the fastest method, but with pen, you know, uh, there isn't so much you can do to actually shade this. And notice how it's not really even, which is fine, you know, you want to get it to be as even as possible, but in the overall composition it's gonna look good, okay? Um, if there's an, a part that's too long, I'll just split it into two lines like I did here. Um, so I'm just gonna continue and do that uh, for the rest of the roofs of the left side and then come back and talk a bit about what I've done. Okay, so now we have another decision-making time. Um, what I will do is actually continue and cross-hatch all of this building, like everything, because uh, as you can see here, the roofs are a little darker than what I did, but there's a reason for that, because I'm gonna darken uh, them a little more by doing another layer. Now, this building is darker than the white, that's for sure, but it's still lighter than the roofs. Okay, so what I'll do is cover all of this building and then use another layer to bring out the really darks of the roof. Okay, and this one will just stay with that initial layer. So I'm just going to continue with that pattern all the way and I'll just leave what you want to be careful about is to remember to leave some highlights. So for example, I have a very light area around this thing here. I have another light one here. I have another light area here. I have... Um, the bottom of the window here is also light and also these inner uh, lines representing the uh, structure of the windows are light. So I'm gonna go over all of that but just leave those uh, highlights white, okay? Let's get to it. Okay, so we got the first layer of cross-hatching all over uh, this thing. I did forget a few parts around here, uh, but that's fine. I can add them now while talking. And what I want to do now is make the roofs darker, okay? Uh, because the right building is not as dark as them. And so what we're gonna do is go over all the extra dark areas, add another layer. Now you'll notice how, uh, two things to note. One is about the windows, I just didn't touch them because areas that are gonna be completely pitch black, I'm gonna add in later and this will make these lines pop. Okay, that's the first. Now the second thing to notice is how I break it into smaller areas. So if I would just start here and just go boom, boom, boom all over this thing, um, 
<laughs> I just forgot a part here. Uh, if I'll go all over this in one go, one layer, I will just get super confused. I won't know when to stop the lines. It will be faster, uh, but it won't be. You won't. You won't know what you're doing and if you're making any mistakes. So. What I did here is I broke it into smaller spaces, so I worked on this part, then I worked on this small area, then this small area, and then every area you can actually think, okay, should this uh, be darker, should it not be darker, should I touch it, should I just leave it as is, okay? So break it into smaller uh, uh, spaces, this is what I did here as well. I first cross-hatched this part, then I worked on this part, this, you see, uh, don't just try to get it all in one layer, it may look better. I will say that, but you will probably mess some things up because it's really hard to follow uh, and understand exactly what you're doing. Okay, so now for the second layer, I'm gonna darken everything that needs darkening, and it includes also the left area here and stuff like that. Okay, uh, let's get to it. I uh, just wanted to point out that I do um, keep in mind the parts that should be lighter and I leave them uh, bright, okay? I'm not touching the left side of the windows because they're white. Uh, and I'm leaving this area, you'll notice how I'm varying the... Uh, the um, uh, distance between the, I forget words today uh, the distance between the lines just to make it a little uh, um, lighter and also uh, don't do what I did here and actually make sure your lines end up in the right place I had it also here I have this issue sometimes if I'm uh, rushing it too much which relates to another video that I did uh, about rushing your art. By the way, this is not an ideal angle for me at all. I would ideally actually turn this around and work like that. Okay, I may do that just for the time lapse because it's really not uh, the same. Uh, but yeah, it works both ways. You kind of uh, learn how to train your um, train your hand to draw it strange angles, especially if you're recording <laughs> for a video. Um, so this is it, I'm gonna continue with the time-lapse now and come back and explain some more stuff. Okay, so I'm basically done with the second layer. Now, many of you uh, may be looking at this and thinking, man, the roof should be much darker. And you are right. What we're gonna do is add a third layer and make the roofs super dark, okay? Because you'll notice how this left area shares the same darkness of the roofs because we're building it up layer by layer. Uh, it's not as dark as them, but it is darker than this part. So I did cross hatch that because the light comes uh, from the right, I never mentioned it. Um, so the left sides of everything is darker. So even the roof of this side is darker than this side and this one as well as this one. And so um, and now that we got the second layer, we can go on and add the third layer that's gonna make the roofs really dark. And notice how these areas under the roofs are even darker than uh, the roof itself. Uh, I don't know if we'll get that exact effect, but I'll try uh, getting uh, a nice effect that will really make it uh, clear uh, where light comes from and what's going on in this uh, scene, okay? So let's go on. And I just hope this video doesn't feel like a watch run cross hatch <laughs> video because this is what's happening here. I'm just cross, -hatch cross hatching. Oh, cross hatching. I'm just cross hatching all over. Um, by the way, the windows I'm gonna leave uh, to the last, as I said. I'm just gonna uh, blacken them entirely. Okay? So let's get to it.
Okay, so we are now pretty much at a really advanced stage here. Uh, what's left to do, and you'll notice I added some shadows on the roof because of the light. So this big part that's protruding is leaving a shadow to the left. Uh, same for this uh, chimney and for this uh, protrusion as well, all of these uh, also. Um, so what's left to do here is add the very black of the uh, insides of the windows. And pretty much it, if there's anything else that needs really darkening on the roofs, stuff like that that we may have missed, uh, that's all there is to it. So for the windows, um, I can just, let's start for example from this one. So because of the angle, we can actually see the thickness of the wall. Uh, let me zoom in for a second. So hopefully you can better see this now. I don't want to zoom in too much because then the quality isn't so good. So um, you can see on the left here, this area I'm going to leave white and I'm just going to darken that whole inner side, okay? Uh, because we can actually see the side of the wall and it's turning towards the light, okay? Uh, same thing goes here. I'm going to darken it completely. And here the side of the wall that we can see is actually on the opposite direction. Uh, it's on the right. Now because uh, it's less well lit it should be a little darker but this is one of those instances where you get to choose if you want to show that or not and I just choose not to uh, because it's such a thin area that if I'm just gonna give it some darkness it'll look like the wall. Um, it's not uh, there's not enough reason to actually go into this much of a detailed difference between the shadowy and the light areas. Um, same thing here. I'm going to leave this uh, left strip uh, like that. And here as well, I'm going to leave the right strip. Okay. Um, let's do uh, one of those uh, windows or even the door. The door is uh, nice. It's like a pathway into the building. Let me zoom out for a second. Okay, so uh, we have the door here and um, I want to leave some white areas just for the sides, just like we had so far. So I'm going to leave this entire left area untouched um, and I'm going to leave this white as well because we actually have this uh, wooden piece or a piece of the wall that's uh, sticking there just to create that um, gateway or uh, door or whatever you want to call it. And there you have it. So um, you can better communicate what it looks like by actually uh, leaving some areas uh, white as I showed you uh, in this, on the sides mainly. Here as well I forgot to indicate it. And it's okay if you miss, uh, miss them uh, from time to time. Uh, in the overall image, uh, the overall image will still look good as long as you do the rest uh, correctly. Uh, now here for this example, because light comes from above and right, this area is less exposed, so I'm just gonna darken it a little more like that. It's all just a play of lights and understanding what's dark, what's light. Uh, sometimes it helps to step away from the from the sketch and try to see the larger shadows, larger uh, shaded areas. It can be a really helpful trick. Now for these windows and these windows it's a little different but still very similar. So what I'm gonna do because it's so thin I didn't even draw the lines. I'm just going to blacken this area and this area and this one and this one and this is gonna just indicate that there's some kind of a window here um, because otherwise I would just uh, get in too big of a mess um, same for these windows I'm just gonna really lightly uh, darken some of them and you know it's just suggesting what it looks like you don't actually need to draw all the details uh, for these windows I'll, I'm gonna take a simpler approach so all I'm gonna do is just darken these dark areas like this and I'm gonna show you a really cool trick uh, to get it to look a little better so because light comes from the top uh, what happens is this bar this one goes like this, sort of covers the one behind it. So you'll notice it happened even in my fingers. There's a shadow under this, this bar, okay? So we want to get that in by simply making a shadow like that and making a shadow here. Now, because it's so small, you can barely see this, but the overall feeling it provides is it just makes it look a little better, okay? Because the lines are uh, touching each other, uh, the effect is a bit diminished. I'll show you on a separate page here. 
So uh, if you have uh, this, for example, this bar, and you have another bar behind it, and it's all a part of the window, uh, creating a shadow under this bar will indicate that it's at the front. You see, I, I think you can already understand it. Uh, if, on the other hand, it would be like that, and I shade this area, you can tell immediately that this one is at the front. Okay, so just a cool uh, trick to get it to look a little more real when you zoom out. It's all in the, um, it's all in the, uh, what's the word for it? Like the suggestion, how you suggest it, it looks like. Uh, let me zoom out and I think what I'll do now is actually finish all the windows in time lapse. There's uh, nothing special about the rest. I'm going to do them the exact same way and give some finishing touches like uh, this chimney. I forgot to make the left side a little darker. Uh, there are the steps here that should be really dark and there's also a shadow under them. So I want to get that in as well. Um, just a quick note on what I'm doing right now, uh, because again, the light comes from the right and there, this area protrudes a bit, it leaves a shadow and you can see it in the reference image as well. It's kind of interesting because the shadow is on the complete reverse direction from the wall here that we see, uh, which creates an interesting effect. Just wanted to point that out and now I'll continue. Okay, one small note about these windows, something that makes them look really good. Uh, when observing the reference, I noticed that not only the darker, the area behind them is darker, but there's also this strip of darkness here, coming from probably this area, because it's protruding, the light comes here, hits it, and not all of this central thing is visible. And notice how it makes it just feel so much uh, more real, I think. Um, so just wanted to point that out and I'm actually really close to finishing this um, so I really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we can wrap it up in a moment uh, when I'm done with this Okay, I think uh, this one is done. Notice how I completely disregarded the water and even the building here at the back um, you don't really have to indicate anything if you don't want to. And also, this um, this sketch will go probably to Redbubble or Society6. I'm going to sell it uh, as a poster or something like that. Uh, we'll see about that. So I want to give it like uh, 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 clear edges. So this one, for example, I just cut it on the roof of the building uh, next by. Uh, anyway, this is it. Let's wrap this up. Friends, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we are done with this sketch. I think this one's uh, ready to go. I'm gonna do quite a few things with it. Um, so I'm gonna probably uh, sell it, uh, as I said, on Redbubble or Society6. Um, also, if you're interested in this method of drawing, I really think my course can help you. So check it out in the description box uh, below the video. And that's it. I want to thank you so much. I'm almost hitting 2000 subscribers, which is really cool. I want to thank all of you for being a part of this and for supporting and just liking and commenting and oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, tripod and just doing whatever you do. Thank you so much. I will see you soon in another video. Until then, take care.